Hello everybody, welcome to On Blast with MG. Today, we are at Kennedy's Automotive. It's my go-to shop in Santa Barbara for any auto repair. Uh, owner's name is Salas. So uh, if you live in Santa Barbara, come out here to get your work done. Guy is really good, used to be a mobile mechanic. Got really busy because he was really good. Opened up his own shop. Kennedy's Automotive. So today we're going to be doing some work to the Lexus GX460 and that would include getting new front and back rotors. My front rotors were warped so they were getting a really bad shake when uh, getting off the freeway or going at speed. So we're going to replace those with the uh, brand new and we're going to go with a slotted and drilled rotor. These guys are Callahan rotors. I got them off of Amazon. Um, they were front and back rotors. I paid about 200 bucks. They want about 140 per axle to resurface them. And the old ones, they're not slotted and drilled. So these will dissipate heat much better than the old ones and they will stop also a lot better. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to change the brakes while we're at it. Also an Amazon special. Um, you know, I think I paid about 50 bucks for the brakes. Uh, and while we're at it, we're also going to do an oil change with the 0W20 weight synthetic, full synthetic motor oil, which the car requires. We're going to change the oil and the filter, and we're going to show you guys how to do that using the Fumoto valve that we installed on a previous video. So, you're going to get a lot of bank for your buck today. Rotors, brakes, oil change, and uh, we're going to be doing it all. Kennedy's Automotive right here in Santa Barbara. So come on over and see Salas if you need any work done. Tell him you saw us on the video and he'll give you a good deal. All right, let's get it going. So first things you gotta do in changing the rotors and the brake pads, you gotta take some of the fluid out of the master cylinder just because when you put some pressure on it, it's gonna back up and it's gonna come back up. We'll take some of that out. So he's using a, a little suction machine right down there to get some of the fluid out. These are available also on Amazon. I had my old truck. I did get, uh, I did do my oil changes with that. It worked pretty well. Just stick that tube right down the uh, dipstick and it sucks all the oil out. But in this case, we're just getting rid of a little bit of the fluid from the master cylinder. So when he puts the brakes on, it won't uh, overflow. The pressure won't build up and come out the other side. Okay. So, first gotta get the tires off. And these are the old rotors. I don't know if you could feel them, but definitely can feel the work. They do. They do shake pretty bad on the freeway when you apply the brakes, so definitely had to be done. So if your car does that, it's probably the rotors. If it shakes really bad when you apply the brakes, getting off the freeway for example, it's probably the rotors that need to be either resurfaced or replaced. So we got to read pins out. Yeah, we need bring more pins. Got the pins out of the brake pads. Now the brake pads are going to come off. We need to push them. I need to try to So basically what Jose is doing is pushing the pistons apart uh, with a little machine first, now with a screwdriver, a couple of screwdrivers to um, be able to take the, uh, the whole brake boot off and then get the rotors off of the, uh, the axle. I'm going to do that all the way around the front and the back and we'll get the rotors off and get the new ones on. There we go, there go the brake pads. 
see the old brake pads? They had lots of ridges through them because of the rotor. This wasn't a good, wasn't a good rotor. Oh, thank you, Vroom. They didn't look at the rotors before they sent this car out, that's for sure. All right, we got the brake rotor off. And the rotors, we got the brake free and the rotor's about to come off. There we go. Uh, see you later, rotor. That's as easy as that. As long as you know how to take the brakes off. It doesn't appear to be too complicated of a matter. A few bolts, a couple of clips, and that's about it. So you secure that nicely, right up to the frame. There's the, uh, that's where all the pistons are. Press down on the pads to make contact with the rotor. And here is the front axle. Once you're here, check for leaks, anything that looks abnormal. Everything looks pretty good and clean. But that's it. And we'll get the new rotor on, get the brake pads back on, and then we'll move on. So now we'll do all the wheels, and then we'll uh, move on to the oil change, and uh, call it a day. And the brakes. All right, there goes a the new rotor. Right on to the axle. It's gonna use that bolt, keep it on in place temporarily while we put the brakes and the brake pads in. Get the boot back onto the rotor. Secure it in place with all the bolts that you just took off. Yeah, much better. Look at this rotor right here. It's got the drilled Callahan rotor. It's got the drill holes and the and nice uh, heat escaping. Compared to the old rotor, I had none of that. Good idea too. Before you install your new rotors, set them side by side to make sure that they're the same size. But yeah, the old rotor, none of the drill holes, none of the slots. So it was just. Um, too much heat, it was distributing too much heat. This car weighs 5,500 pounds, so it's not a small car. So when you're going down a long hill and stay on brakes a lot, you know, there's a lot of heat being built up. It's good to have some way to dissipate that. All right, it goes to the slide in the brakes, brake pads. We went with uh, Bosch pads. Quiet cast. Seem to have good reviews on Amazon. I'll let you guys know how they go, how they do over the course of the over the course of time. There you go. Pins will go back in. The springs and we're back in business in no time. All right, guys, that's it. New brake pads are in. See, right there. Clips are in. Rotors are in. Now we just. Put them back, put the tire back on and secure it. And we're done with one side. While we're at it, we're gonna rotate the tires as well. Not such a bad idea. We got the uh, holding bolts off the tire, off the rotor, I mean. We're gonna get the rear tire to go on the front, so we're gonna rotate the tires, and this one is basically done. I'm gonna put the uh, bolts on. Jose here does pretty dang good work. He's been a mechanic for a long time now. There we go. Now we just get the bolts back in and we're good to go. Well, the same thing we'll do to the other side of the, the right side of the front. 
We won't film that for you guys, but we will film one of the rears for you and then we'll go to the oil change. All right, guys. So as long as you got your car up on the lift, you always it's always a smart idea to take a look up. Take a good look underneath and see if you could find anything that's uh, out of place. So you know, we'll take a look at your your boots right there, you know, because this is a four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive car all the time. So you want to make sure you don't have any any leaks. It's not excessively, you know, oily. Uh, these particular ones look pretty good. I uh, also want to take a look at your skid plates on the GX460. Comes with a pretty sturdy uh, plate that covers the oil pan and the front of the engine compartment. I'm sure, there's no dings, you know, things out of place. They look pretty good. Also, if you go back to the fuel tank, the fuel tank also has got a nice little skid plate right on it. So, you just basically want to go around, take a good look, make sure nothing is out of place. There's no oil leaks, there's no problems that you can see. Um, anything that's out of place. It's always smart, you know. You got the car up on the lift, so take advantage of that. So we've done the, the front rotors and brakes, and now we're gonna do the rear. They're pretty much the same. You gotta take the wheel off, you gotta take your pads out, you gotta take the clips, and then uh, put new ones in, put the rotor in, and you're good to go. So we've done the front left and passenger side, and we're gonna go ahead and do the rear. So see these nice new slotted and drill rotors. Hopefully it'll dissipate heat a lot better than the old ones. If you take a look at the old ones, the driver's side one was pretty, pretty grummy. It had a couple of, it had a, had a chunk on one side. I can't seem to, it's got it right here. Nice, kind of a nice scratch to it. I don't think you could see it right there. But also, they're slotted pretty heavily, so they could be resurfaced. There's definitely a lot of room to left on these things to resurface them. But I chose to go with the slotted and drilled ones because they dissipate a little bit better heat and they weren't very pricey. For um, four rotors, I paid 200 bucks. They're Callahan rotors for just under 200. It's a pretty good deal. I'm gonna keep these old ones. I'm gonna resurface them just so I could have an extra pair just in case. Okay, so never waste. If they're not, you know, completely worn out, got to reuse them. Also, my brakes, these are my old front brakes. They still had quite a bit of life left in them. Um, so, you know, but I don't think I'm going to keep these um, old brake pads just because they, they don't look too healthy, you know. Like you could see from the old rotor, look at all these uh, grooves and things in this brake pad. And it's even broken off here. It looks like... Probably from all the pulsating it was doing when I was stepping on the brake coming off the freeway. I imagine, I don't know if these, this would actually happen, but I imagine this could probably just break off completely and maybe just explode. Anyways, so we're going to move on to the rear wheel and do those rotors and then we'll do the oil change. Alright, so we get the, take the bolts off the back. We're going to do the back brakes and rotors right now. So take the bolts off the back. There's two bolts, one on each side. That allows you to uh, spread them apart and take the pads out. There go the bolts. One, and there's another one at the bottom. Give you guys a better view. There you go, there goes the brake, sh brake shoe. This particular one is, the rear is only one piston. using a special tool to spread it out a little bit. Sounds a little... Alright, there it goes. There's the 
one piston. One piston as compared to two in the front. There's the two more bolts in the back that have to come off. And then the entire assembly comes out. And those, that's where the old brake pads were housed. As you can see, these are pretty new too, so they didn't really need to be replaced, but the rotors needed to be replaced. All right, now we just get the new rotor. Huh? All right, so we got the rotor off, and then put a little uh, brake cleaner on here, get everything nice and clean. Then we're gonna get the new rotor on and then we'll put the brake pads in and move on to the oil change. And nice and clean there. All right, since we get that done, we're just gonna pop the new rotor back on. Again, what a difference. I get the old pads out and put the new pads in. All right, so this is what the, what the uh, rear rotor looks like. It's a little bit thinner diameter on the, uh, on the brake pad because the rear usually do less of the work on these, uh, on most cars, unless you're a race car. Got the uh, new pads in here, you can see. Got some really good life in them. And it's ready for the wheel. Now, give you guys a review on how they uh, compare to the old rotors. So if you have a GX460 and you want to get yourself uh, uh, more stopping power, less uh, heat, uh, um, more heat distribution I should say, um, then go with the Callahan uh, rotors and Bosch, Bosch I say I guess, Bosch brake pads. I'll let you guys know, we'll do a, we'll a follow-up video on this and uh, keep you posted on how they work. All right, so we put the, putting the shoe back on. You gotta really get these uh, bolts nice and tight. Looks like you're using a brake bar right there, just to make sure they're nice and tight. Don't want these things coming loose. All right, and the pads go in. Your pads on each side. And then the shoe cover will go in, followed by the bolts that hold it in place. A lot of, a lot of grease. A lot of grease on the bolts as well. And then from the rear of the uh, axle, the bolts go in. And then they'll get tightened by hand, followed by the breaker bar. And that's about it. That's about all you got for the rear brakes.